A stomach ulcer is a wound or a sore on the lining of your stomach, your small intestine, o yung daanan ng pagkain or ang esophagus. The most common symptom is a burning stomach pain. And most ulcers are caused by a bacterial infection and can get worse with certain types of food. Here on MedTalk Health Talk, we'll discuss how ulcers are diagnosed, what the different types of treatment will be, and how you can further care for yourself if you have this condition. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and we're glad you can join us on the show. There are different types of ulcers. We have your stomach ulcers, which are normally called gastric ulcers and are part of a broader group called the acid-related disorders. Most ulcers, however, are located in the small intestine, and they are also known as duodenal ulcers. Ulcers in the throat or in the pagkain are called esophageal ulcers. Our guests for today will help us understand these conditions and how we can prevent and treat them. We'd like to welcome on the show Dr. Luis Abola. He's a gastroenterologist and section chief of gastroenterology at the UERM. We also have Dr. Jose Marianito Bautista, an internal medicine specialist from Health Index Clinic. It's good to have both of you on the show. Now, we'd like to begin this discussion with the stomach ulcer. I'll start first with Dr. Abola. While ulcers uh, are caused by an H. pylori infection, uh, can't be prevented uh, that much. There are ways in order to reduce your risks from this. What's the best way for them to do this? To prevent ulcers, one is since uh, H. pylori is um, transmitted by uh, oral fecal, that means contaminated food, contaminated water, we should cook our food well. Uh, if we're eating raw vegetables, make sure we wash them well. Uh, and then, of course, make sure our drinking water is clean. Uh, another source, another cause for gastric ulcers would be taking anti-inflammatory drugs, you know, pain, we call non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs uh, for pain, is to make sure that we, we're very careful about taking these things. Now, we want to show you yes. a list of the different symptoms of ulcers. And as we said earlier, pain is one of your first Signs. Now, Dr. Obola, pag-usapan naman natin ang iba't ibang symptoms and let's also discuss why a patient feels these symptoms when they have uh, probably an ulcer, a beginning ulcer. So can you please explain uh, to our viewers an example why a patient would feel bloating and nausea? The reason for the pain is not really well elucidated kasi uh, wala namang pain fibers ang stomach. No? And we find patients with large ulcers na walang pain. Yung bloatedness can be due to what we call dysmotility. That means hindi coordinated ang, ang galaw ng stomach tsaka duidinum. So they feel bloatedness and they may experience nausea or they may be re regurgitating back. So as, I, uh, uh, as you mentioned, pain is the most common. So yung sakit is nasa gitna ng chan, so just underneath your rib, uh, sternum or chest bone. Ang very characteristic ito is uh, pain before eating, which is relieved by eating, but then comes back after a few hours. Tapos the patient usually wakes up in the early morning na sumasakit rin ng chan. So th those are the things that I look for uh, if I'm considering an acid peptic disease. I'll go with Dr. Bautista now. Paano naman, doctor, yung, yung pakiramdam ng isang pasyente when they feel heartburn or yung uh, acid reflux? What would cause those uh, symptoms of, for someone with a stomach ulcer? Heartburn is a burning pain described uh, as mahapdi or maasim or parang nagiinit daw yung dibdib nila. It is caused by hyperacidity and it is noted usually after eating or feasting on spicy foods, drinking alcohol, and noted after lying down or bending over. Okay, now, some of the patients may experience also yung pagkakaiba ng kulay ng kanilang dumi or some dark-colored stools. Dr. Abola, could that be a sign of progression of an ulcer? Okay, uh, if the patient complains of black stools, especially black, no, we ask them, anong kulay? It's not dark brown, it's really black. Sticky black, that means 
uh, blood came into contact with uh, acid. So that is a sign that this patient is having an upper uh, GI bleeding. Yes, now with Dr. Bautista, sometimes uh, a person may feel uh, akala nila acidic sila, no? but it could be something else. When is something more than just hyperacidity? What type of symptoms will they feel that may prompt them to, to maybe say na, ops, hindi na regular na hyperacidity ito? Well, if a patient exhibits anorexia or wala silang gana kumain, or napapansin nila, nangangayayat sila dahil hindi sila nakakakain, or they uh, feel nauseous or parang nasusuka, or nasusuka sila actually kapag mahapding mahapdi yung chanya, then probably we are, all, we are dealing with ulcers already and not just hyperacidity. Okay, and another sign that, that may signify an ulcer is that of anemia. Now, Dr. Abola, is anemia one of the symptoms of a stomach ulcer? Uh, of course, once you start bleeding, no, uh, and it's a chronic bleeding, nung matagal na siya nagbibleed na on and off, uh, patients may present with anemia. So normally, pag may anemia ang pasyente, na severe anemia, let's say less than 100, na re refer sa amin for... Uh, to investigate, no? to, we do upper uh, GI endoscopy as well as lower GI endoscopy to look for a possible source of bleeding. So all of these tests are definitely there in order for the benefit of the patients para malaman talaga kung ulcer ba ito or hyperacidity lamang. Now that we know the symptoms, how does a doctor know for sure a patient has an ulcer? What tests need to be done and what treatment will be prescribed? More after the break, right here on MedTalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines. We are your partner in healthcare. Welcome back to the program. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez. A stomach or peptic ulcer happens when you develop a wound or sores on the lining of your stomach. Now, Dr. Abola, let's discuss how a stomach ulcer is diagnosed. Can you explain to us what a breath test is? The urea breath test is a test that will detect the presence of the bacteria called Helicobacter pylori. Because Helicobacter pylori has been shown to be the, the, one of the causes for development of gastric as well as duodenal ulcers. But in diagnosing ulcers, uh, initially we base it on symptoms only, and then we start them on medications. If they respond, that is a tentative, we call them acid-related disorders. Uh, when they are older, when my patients are older, let's say 40 or above, they may have to undergo gastroscopy or upper GI endoscopy for a more definitive diagnose, diagnosis. And aside from the urea breath test that uh, you mentioned, doctor, there are other tests and procedures that will help a doctor diagnose stomach ulcers. Now, let's discuss that uh, this time. You mentioned a camera or a tube that will be inserted uh, to, in order to see the lining of the stomach. Could you explain to our viewers what type of procedure is this? Is, is, is this a painful procedure? What kind of information can we get from this? Okay, so we call this gastroscopy or upper GI endoscopy. So what we do is, of course, uh, most of the time we put our patients to sleep now uh, uh, with the medication. It's um, not painful, but maybe uh, some discomfort, especially if the patient's awake. So we put a, a tube that is around this thick you know, with the light and camera inside down to the stomach up to the duodenum. So what we're looking for is, of course, kung may injury, kung may ulcers, pero ang isang consideration namin also is we look for more serious illnesses, no? like a tumor, bukol. Kasi ang symptoms of gastric cancer at peptic ulcer are very the same. So as mentioned earlier by Dr. Bautista, pag may weight loss, pag may anorexia, uh, baka can malignant na rin yung yung lesion, no? Kasi can, uh, a gastric cancer may present initially as a ulcer also. The procedure will last mga 10 to 15 minutes only. 
If your doctor needs to have a camera in order para silipin yung stomach nyo, it is a good procedure. It's minimal discomfort, but there is a lot of information that your doctor can get with regards to your stomach problems. Now, ulcers get worse without treatment. That's why we'd like to spend some time to discuss how to treat ulcers with the H. pylori infection. So your doctor might give you an antibiotic medicine for a few weeks. Now, Dr. JM, Dr. Bautista, let's talk about that and other medicines that will be given to a patient with ulcer. Well, generally, two medications are given for uh, ulcers. One is antacid if you only have hyperacidity. And if you proven to have ulcers already, you may be given protein pump inhibitors or PPI. And if you're positive for helicobacter pylori, you may be given an another antibiotic, which may be amoxicillin or uh, clarithromycin, which can be given for about a month or two, depending upon the discretion of your doctor. Now, so with Dr. Bautista, are there any restrictions for someone undergoing treatment for ulcers? Meron bang hindi dapat nilang kainin? Meron bang hindi dapat nilang gawin? If you're undergoing treatment for uh, ulcers, it is best to avoid uh, alcohol intake, maintain a high-fiber diet, and avoid eating spicy foods. It is also advised that you avoid uh, eating, uh, drinking milk or milk-containing foods such as cake, ice cream, because it promotes hypersecretion of gastric acid in your stomach. Itong mga gamot naman na Dr. Bautista na iniinom for ulcers, meron ba itong mga side effects na kailangan na abangan ng mga viewers? Well, antacids uh, taken for more than two weeks can have a buildup of calcium or magnesium in your system. That's why we are wary of giving antacids for patients uh, with kidney problems be because it, it may have a buildup of calcium or magnesium. While proton pump inhibitors are generally safe and well tolerated, it, it can be given for two months or more, and the side effects noted are extremely rare. Dr. Abola, talk to us about this. Uh, what happens or what are the conditions in which a person may need surgery for their ulcer? Okay, uh, the, the indication for surgery would be, let's say, there's intractable bleeding. The patient bleeds, and in spite of... Uh, so that is an indication for surgery. Uh, another complication of ulcers is if there's obstruction. Sometimes the ulcer becomes so large near the junction of the gas, stomach, chaka duodenum, that's that nababara, nababara yung stomach. No? If that cannot be relieved medically, that is another uh, indication for surgery. So, and of course, another indication is, uh, not complication is perforation. In nabutas yung stomach or your duodenum, del malalim yung ulcer, and if cannot be managed uh, medically, will also have, uh, need uh, surgery. And while it's unlikely that you can prevent ulcers caused by an infection, there are ways to prevent the other causes of ulcer. We'll explain those after a short break. We'll be right back. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and you're watching Med Talk Health Talk on CNN Philippines. Again, it's very difficult to prevent an ulcer caused by an H. pylori infection. However, there are ways to reduce your risks, and that includes limiting pain medicines or non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. Now, this question is for Dr. Bautista. Can you tell us more about these? Well, at the top of the list is the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs, which is uh, aspirin, ibuprofen, or, alac or naproxen, because it interferes with the ability of the stomach to protect itself from the very uh, gastric juices uh, that, that it produces. The problem with ulcers caused by chronic NSAID intake, it is more prone to gastrointestinal bleeding. Uh, which needs closer monitoring and 
may add significant morbidity and mortality for the patient. Okay, so always check with your doctor in case you are taking any of these NSAIDs or taking medications for for chronic pain. Now, a healthy diet can really make a difference in our lives. It can benefit your intestinal tract and pretty much your overall health, and that's that's a sure thing. So, Dr. Abola, what's your best advice in terms of diet in order to prevent ulcers? Uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, avoid spicy food probably because that, that can uh, cause more symptoms. Uh, uh, lifestyle, actually smoking is a risk factor. So I advise my patients to stop smoking because it interferes with healing of the, it, it interferes with healing because it diminishes blood flow. Important uh, also is eating on time, no? not, not missing you out on your meals. Then probably uh, not eating too much, too fast. No? Uh, kasi pag masyadong madami kinakain, nagbo-bloat yung stomach. Eh. So that can cause also more symptoms. Then uh, the usual is eating healthy. No? Uh, more vegetables, less fried food. It's more of a healthy, healthy form of eating. Then avoiding... I tell my patients to avoid taking uh, beverages or coffee on an empty stomach. Okay, and, and of course, Dr. Obola, ang, ang gusto rin ng ating mga viewers ay yung mga home remedies because there are also some home remedies for ulcers, but we want to make it clear that they're not meant to replace prescription medicine. Instead, they can help or complement your current treatment plan. Now, Dr. Abola, let's talk about probiotics. Is, is this a good supplement to take? And what exactly are probiotics? Well, probiotics are good to take, but the, the effect of probiotics are really in your colon. There are some studies now that show that it is helpful in general well-being, no? in health, general health. But for ulcers, it, it may not be that helpful. But in general, I, I prescribe probiotics for my patients, especially if they have some other abdominal symptoms. Okay, now for Dr. Bautista, how about honey? Uh, meron bang evidence na ang honey can help with ulcers? Because a lot of uh, uh, people nowadays like that uh, holistic approach, things that are organic. How, is there any evidence with honey being able to help? Honey is used for burns, it promotes wound healing, and it is used for mouth sores. It has also been shown that it can inhibit the growth and activity of uh, Helicobacter pylori. I think it is used for hypersidity alone and not for ulcers. Let's get the opinion of Dr. Abola for, for that. Is, is, is there a, a good indication that honey will be able to help uh, someone with an ulcer? Well, uh, I don't think there's any evidence, there's any trial that has been done on that, but it can be tried. No, uh, since it's not really that innocuous, uh, it's not really unhealthy, it's quite good, uh, better than sugar, in fact. So you can try that. But be careful because, as, as mentioned, if your symptoms do not get better uh, or if you notice you're still losing weight, probably it's best also, of course, to consult your physician. That is correct. So if you experience a dull burning pain in your stomach, it is very important to go see your doctor. It might be ulcer which will need medical attention. Remember, the longer it's left unattended, the worse the condition gets. And with that, we'd like to thank our guests for today, gastroenterologist Dr. Luis Abola and internal medicine specialist Dr. Jose Marianito Bautista. We appreciate the time you've given to our viewers. And to all of you out there, it was a pleasure having you. Always stay healthy and be well. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and we'll see you again next time right here on MedTalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines.